Good morning. My name is Paul Stoller and I am an anthropologist and I'm thrilled to have been invited to participate in the Center for uh, Imaginative Ethnography's ongoing Imaginings Project. Specifically, they've asked me to uh, talk about how anthropologists might respond and contribute to debates on current events. It's my pleasure to do so. I've been an anthropologist for almost 35 years. In my time as an anthropologist, uh, most of the discipline has been influenced by a wide variety of theoretical paradigms. And um, uh, when I started out in graduate school, the, theor the reigning theoretical paradigm was structuralism, uh, a la Levi-Strauss. And uh, I was very much influenced by that, as well as other theoretical paradigms, symbolic anthropology, ethnographic, uh, ethnoscience, ethnographic semantics, uh, the, certainly the reflexive term, uh, postmodern anthropology, uh, and so on. Uh, these have, in my time, come and gone. What has remained, what has remained uh, as the bedrock of our discipline, in, in my view at least, has been uh, ethnography. The ethnography is our contribution to the world. Ethnography is what uh, we do that will remain open to the world in the future. And so what I want to do today is to talk to you a little bit about uh, what I view the future possibilities of anthropology uh, in a very different uh, set of circumstances than from what I experienced when I was starting out. And that different set of circumstances is that we have a lot more media to use to uh, communicate our message to uh, broader publics. When I started out doing anthropology, the medium was, by and large, uh, the text, uh, writing, um, write, writing uh, journal articles, writing scholarly books uh, in a certain way, uh, focused on an audience of uh, fellow anthropologists as well as uh, students taking our courses. Um, there certainly was ethnographic film, but at that time, ethnographic film was uh, kind of uh, marginalized. So uh, in, the, in the coming years, uh, as the years uh, went by, uh, we, uh, the social media began to develop more and more and more. And today, uh, anthropologists are uh, investigating all sorts of media and its impact on social life. And so uh, the context in which we are operating today is a very different one from the one that I first experienced uh, in the 1970s when I started uh, studying anthropology. So what I'd like to talk about a little bit today is um, the scholar's obligation uh, and how that scholar's obligation plays itself out uh, in the contemporary world of social media. For me, the scholar's obligation uh, comes from my uh, experience among the Songhai people in West Africa. And they say that when you are starting out as a young scholar or as a, a young practitioner of some sort, uh, you learn the nuts and bolts of your trade. You uh, learn uh, how to uh, do X, Y, and Z uh, as, as best as you can. And as time goes on, you become more and more a master of your art, whether it's sorcery, whether it's weaving, whether it's anthropology. And in time, as you get older, uh, you become a master. But your greatest obligation, your greatest obligation, your greatest obligation as a scholar, as a sorcerer, as a weaver, as whatever, your greatest obligation is to pass that knowledge on to the next generation. When you are a master of your practice, uh, that is your greatest obligation, to make sure that the knowledge that you have uh, accumulated uh, is passed on to the next generation uh, in a sort of highly accessible way. So uh, that's the, what I see as my greatest obligation, is to try to pass on what knowledge I've been able to uh, uh, gather over the years um, uh, and pass it on to the next generation and pass it on to a larger publics. So um, I think that today um, the world is in such a state that it really needs uh, much more of an anthropological voice, meaning that we should use a variety of media, um, you know, certainly film would be one, video another, uh, so uh, social media, um, Facebook, Twitter, and the like. Uh, and um, uh, and also uh, blogging, so that we should um, we should try to use these media to reach uh, a larger public. And the reason for that is is that uh, there are issues today in the world that are really serious ones that need, I think, an anthropological voice uh, so, uh, as a way of trying to help resolve some of the issues. And so I'd like to talk about three things that anthropologists can do uh, using social media 
to uh, make the world a little bit sweeter. One is, uh, in the United States at least, uh, race relations. Uh, anthropologists have long uh, debated and talked uh, very intelligently about the dynamics of race, but race remains a fundamental problem uh, in the United States. Uh, it's, a, it's sort of a foundational kind of, uh, um, uh, it's kind of foundational in terms of how our society works here in the United States. So uh, to know more about it and how it operates, how racism operates, uh, is very, very important. And so I would uh, urge anthropologists to, uh, to write about these, this kind of issue as much as possible um, using uh, social media, using Facebook, using Twitter, uh, blogging about it as well. Uh, so that our uh, sort of uh, our voice, uh, which is based on you know long uh, nuanced research, can reach a larger public, so that it can help to resolve some of the issues that uh, emerge from the ongoing presence of race racism uh, in society. So that's one thing. Secondly, uh, income and social inequality. Uh, my students have a hard time understanding or. Uh, accepting the fact that we live in a society, a complex society, which, in which there is, you know, growing uh, uh, income and social inequality. They like to believe that, you know, everyone is equal, the, the, the playing field is level, which it is not. So uh, the more that we can write about uh, inaccessible ways, uh, you know, for example, David Graper's uh, book on debt is a very accessible text on a complex subject that demonstrates uh, a lot of issues, you know, demonstrates the, the sort of perniciousness of social inequality and income inequality. Uh, and other anthropologists have done an equally good job uh, writing about uh, income inequality and social inequality. So uh, this is an issue that we uh, should take up uh, and uh, we should write about in an accessible way, uh, not in an ex exceedingly theoretical way, but in an accessible way, such that the anthropological orientation to uh, social inequality and income inequality could be uh, better known by larger publics. Finally, and perhaps the most important uh, domain for our um, anthropological intervention is climate change. Uh, climate change uh, is an area where uh, the American Anthropological Association just published a uh, you know, sort of research uh, paper uh, on climate change. Uh, which is done in a kind of uh, uh, somewhat of a dense language. But uh, be that as it may, um, we need to uh, talk about the social ramifications of climate change and how it will affect uh, our, the quality of our social lives. And this is something that we can, we can talk about in, a, in, in an incredibly powerful way. And so I think that... Uh, uh, we should use all of the media that are available to us, films, uh, you know, film and video, uh, social media, and especially blogging, uh, to uh, make, our, uh, make, make our understandings of the social ramifications of climate change better known to the public. Uh, so I think th these are our scholarly obligations, and th those are three areas. There, there are obviously more areas that we can uh, uh, implicate ourselves in, but these are three areas in which I feel we are obligated as scholars um, to, um, we're obligated to, to participate and communicate to not just our colleagues, but to a, a much broader public uh, to make, uh, to make our, our, our voice known and heard. And uh, in, in so doing, we will, we will contribute to the public debate about these issues, which are central to not just our lives today, but the central to the lives of our children and our grandchildren. And so uh, this is the great, this is the scholarly obligation uh, that is uh, very important to me. So I think that our uh, responding to current events, whatever they might be, in an accessible uh, way using social media, that is the anthropological challenge of the future. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, things like the Center for Imaginative Ethnography are a, uh, a good beginning uh, to take us in that direction. Thank you very much.